remember the day vividly because I was uh, I took early early lunch and I was pulling up to the house and as soon as I turned the corner I saw the social worker and Kennedy kind of like hopping up our our walkway and so I came in the house and uh, I really wanted uh, Kennedy to see Callie and so she was sleeping but I went and I got her and I had her on my lap and I remember uh, Kennedy kind of just uh, she was sitting on the floor playing with some letters and she just did one of these and she points to Callie and she says, that's my sister. And like at that point, like knowing that more than trying to adopt that we really, you know, reunited two sisters and provided a loving home. I mean, you, you, you can't pay for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You can't. I dropped the girls off at school and I'm waving bye or hi to another mom and my arm pops out of socket and it locks. So I end up having surgery. And so three weeks into my physical therapy, we get a phone call. I'm laying in bed because I'm not allowed to do anything. And my social worker says, there's a baby. He's due in, what, four months? And, and gave me some details, a few details. And we said, okay, well, we'll talk about it. Our birth mom um, was homeless and she was at a homeless shelter getting food. One of the uh, friends of, of, of the Claris Network was volunteering at this homeless shelter and notices that she's pregnant and she just has this like sense of urgency come over her. And so she approaches her and like, hey, what are you gonna do? Do you need help? And she says, you know, started crying, I don't know. And immediately she referred her to uh, Talitha and Claris and literally she got the help that she needed the next day. We literally said yes uh, five days before he was born. We're there and, you know, if you've ever been in the baby ICU, it's very small, mm -hmm. not supposed to be more than two people in there, but they let all four of us in there and a chaplain. We did a, a, a trans, I, I guess a transference of parents mm -hmm. right there, like in the NICU. And they were both like, um, you know, this is your son now. And I mean, just like they, they gave they trusted us. trusted us with their son. Their son. I mean. She, yeah, she handed me, uh, she had Wade in her hand and then she kissed him and then she handed to him, handed him to me and said, go to your mom. And I said to him, kiss your mommy. And it was like everybody in the room was crying because yeah. it was such a, such a tender moment. And just we honored each other as birth parents and as adoptive parents, we were honoring each other and we were acknowledging that we both needed each other in that moment. They needed us to take care of their son and we wanted a son. To physically see her go through the pain, she had a cesarean and all those things that she had to do to, to heal. She loved her child. They loved their child enough to give him the best. Yeah. They just she sacrificed for him. And he's gonna know that. When he gets older, he's gonna know that. Yeah. And I mean, she really stepped in at the at the ninth hour with Clarice. And I mean, you know, we, we ended up having a healthy son. Had she not? Mm -hmm. I don't know what would have happened because like they're they have like a a, a, a natural love for what they do mm -hmm. and and it comes out uh, i'm like mama bear and i'll fight for them <laughs> protect them i love our children as if i birthed them when i look back at like all the drama it was all worth it because there's nothing more rewarding than what i have now in my life